In a dark cave, a man is stuck with his legs trapped in stocks. It smells bad, with chopped off feet lying around. There's a scary figure in front of him, sharpening a blade. This figure, called Cyclops, has one eye in its mouth. The man tries to talk to Cyclops, saying he's sent by Gaia, Cyclops' mother, to find her oracle. But Cyclops doesn't care and starts painting the man's feet blue. The man takes a chance, steals Cyclops' blade, and breaks free. He hears screams and finds three women, each claiming to be Gaia's oracle. Not sure who's telling the truth, he decides to save all three. He tricks Cyclops and ties himself up with a rope. When they get out of the cave, the youngest woman admits she's not Gaia's oracle, nor are the others. Still, the man thinks she's the real oracle because she acted unexpectedly. They leave together, unaware that priests want to kill him to find out the truth. While traveling, the woman tells the man about her painful past of abuse and rape. He finds it hard to believe because he was taught that oracles must be virgins. She blames the priests for the crimes. This makes the man question his beliefs. Then, she shares a vision, saying his name has a curse that turns people into stone, if said. Afraid, the man thinks about changing his name. Having proven her identity as the Oracle, she demands to be released, but the man points out that being the Oracle doesn't exempt her from being kidnapped. They are suddenly attacked by cannibals, and the man fights them off using only a rope, managing to strangle one. However, the other cannibal escapes with the Oracle. The man follows their trail, but he vanishes inexplicably. Surprisingly, the man who took the Oracle turns out to be someone she knows and trusts. She leaves with him, expressing concern for his safety. However, they are interrupted by the hero, who kidnaps her again. Despite their bickering, the Oracle's brother, Theo, arrives and incapacitates the hero with a poison dart. The Oracle chooses to save the hero's life, though she ties him up to prevent further trouble. As they travel, the Oracle deduces insights about the hero's upbringing. She reveals that Theo is her brother and argues with the hero about whether Theo will accompany her to Athens. Upon reaching a temple, it's revealed that the hero's true intention was to consult the Oracle. She criticizes him for this, offering him visions even outside the temple. During their argument, the Oracle uses the temple's magical properties to enhance her visions and discovers the hero's royal lineage. It is revealed that he is the son of King Aegeus of Athens and holds the sacred lexicon within him. The temple priest explains that the lexicon leads to the doors of Olympus, granting godhood. Despite the priest's pleas for assistance, the hero decides to leave with the Oracle. Enraged, the priest orders his guards to attack, leading to a confrontation in which the hero surrenders to save Theo. However, the priest still orders Theo's execution. The scene shifts to 2015 BC during the Siege of Athens by King Minos. King Aegeus gathers his war council, which includes General Dion. Despite being outnumbered 10 to 1, Aegeus remains confident in their abilities. He dismisses the idea of using wooden horses and instead relies on his wife Medea's magic and her interpretation of a lexicon. The lexicon, believed to be inside their son Lycos, is accessed by bleeding him and having him recite his visions. Medea becomes frustrated when Lycos feels woozy during the process. Meanwhile, the city walls witness intense and bloody fighting, culminating in King Aegeus being struck by an arrow. Medea tends to Aegeus' wounds while we are introduced to Aegeus' brother Pallas, Prince Xerxes, and a girl named Alexa, a servant who takes over Aegeus' care. Pallas begins plotting against his sickly brother, manipulating Dion to his advantage. As Aegeus attempts to resume leadership despite his condition, Medea investigates the arrow that wounded him, realizing it was not of Minoan origin. She suspects Pallas's involvement and uncovers his plot to use Captain Horos as an assassin. After this, Medea outweets Horos and kills him. Returning to care for her husband, Medea manipulates the War Council, poisoning Dion and appointing Lycos as the leader of their armies. With Medea effectively in charge, even Pallas acknowledges her power. However, despite her efforts, Medea remains unaware that Lycos is not the firstborn son, holding the true key to the lexicon. We see a sobbing man in a rickety flying machine, and it strongly suggests that it is deadless. He is crying following the tragic fate of his son Icarus, who plummeted to his death after flying too close to the sun. Meanwhile, imprisoned by the priests of Gaia, the hero, and the oracle endure torment as the priests drain the hero's blood for visions to locate the mythical lexicon. Desperate for clues, the priests interpret the hero's ramblings as a sign that they need the Ring of the Magi, which the hero supposedly knows the location of. However, instead of pursuing this lead, the hero hallucinates a monstrous creature. In a bid to access more visions, the oracle suggests that having sex with the hero will yield better results than stabbing him with needles. Surprisingly, the priests accept this explanation, allowing the oracle to straddle the hero and use her hairpin to cut his bonds. When the priests catch on to their ruse, the oracle switches tactics, slapping the hero awake and fending off the priests until he regains his composure. 
She manages to fend off one priest long enough for the hero to take action, but she prevents him from killing the other priest as she wants to kill him herself, revealing that he is responsible for her brother's death. The hero appears unsettled by this revelation. As they set out on their journey, the oracle outlines her plan to reach Athens, but the hero questions why they would want to go there. Surprised, the oracle reveals that the king of Athens is Hero's father. However, the hero expresses no interest in his father or the magical book, preferring to return home. He is wary of the dangers associated with being the bearer of the lexicon and is skeptical about the benefits of being a prince god. However, the oracle argues that revealing his identity would attract unwanted attention and emphasizes the importance of stopping the war. However, the hero is reluctant, pointing out that Athens is embroiled in conflict, which only makes him less inclined to go there. Their discussion is interrupted by the sudden crash landing of Daedalus, who is distressed, begging Apollo to take him instead of his son Icarus. Concerned, the oracle and the hero intervene to prevent him from harming himself, recognizing Daedalus's troubled state. In Athens, young Lycos eagerly anticipates leading his father's armies, but Medea swiftly quashes his ambitions, instructing him to obediently follow her commands. Despite objections from more experienced generals, Prince Pallas interferes in military strategy, but Lycos surprises everyone with his clever tactics, aiding the outnumbered Athenian forces against the Minoans. Meanwhile, King Aegeus, still determined to play a role in the battle despite his illness, devises a reckless plan to open the city gates and charge against the enemy. Sensing disaster, Medea drugs him to prevent his involvement. Meanwhile, the priest of Gaia informs Medea about the hero, including the revelation that she has been bleeding the wrong son. Medea sends the terrified priest, Cyrus, to bring Hero while she confronts Aegeus about his other son. Disgusted by his past actions and revelations about the lexicon being a curse, Medea berates Aegeus, even physically assaulting him while he is weak. Aegeus admits his ignorance regarding the Hero's original mother, referring to her as a chance encounter, before being drugged once more by Medea. Meanwhile, Lycos chooses not to confess his disobedience to his mother, fearing her wrath, but is surprised when she doesn't punish him for his actions regarding the lexicon. That night, Lycos's plan succeeds and Pallas wastes no time in manipulating Lycos, urging him to take the throne. To further his schemes, Pallas insists that Lycos perform a ritual sacrifice, but Lycos refuses, leading Pallas to wrongly assume that Lycos is gay. Pallas then manipulates Lycos further by providing him with a handsome young scribe, Kimon, to serve him and act as a spy. Meanwhile, the hero and the oracle flee from Cyrus and the warrior priests, assuming them to be Minoan pursuers. They run until Daedalus collapses in grief, prompting the oracle to pray to Gaia for guidance. During this, Hero's random sketches reveal his knowledge about the Ring of the Magi, prompting him to seek it out in the forest of Trashan. Despite his initial reluctance, the oracle convinces him that their fates are intertwined. Unable to locate the Hero and the oracle, the warrior priests seek Medea's help. She unleashes a mystical entity to ensnare the Hero, but the oracle and Daedalus manage to fight it. Frustrated, Medea seeks Pallas's assistance but finds him fully under Lycos's influence. Medea warns Lycos about the dangers of court politics and tries to assert her influence, but he interprets her hostility as a sign of respect. Meanwhile, Hero gets close to Oracle acknowledging her recent efforts to save his life. As they face another perilous encounter, the Hero has a vision of a menacing monster likely related to the Ring of the Magi. The Oracle experiences unsettling visions about Athens, involving snakes, eagles, and archers leading her to believe it's their responsibility to save the world. However, Daedalus is doubtful about their ability to do so, especially with Cyrus and the warrior priests catching up to them. Soon after this, Cyrus captures them and threatens to harm the Oracle, causing the hero to lead them to the supposed location of the ring. Cyrus sends the hero into a cave, but loses control of the rope, resulting in both him and the hero falling into the cave. The hero manages to outweigh the warrior priests using his knowledge of the woods aided by his trusty rope. Meanwhile, the oracle continues to stress the importance of their partnership with the hero and Daedalus. The hero reveals a flashback of his mother being attacked by individuals seeking the ring, leading to her death. After this, Daedalus deduces that the attackers were magi, Babylonian mystics seeking to overthrow the gods with monotheism, and the ring may possess the power to harm the gods. Realizing the ring's significance, they follow cryptic clues to its location and experience a strange time-stop moment, during which the hero falls but remains unharmed. Despite this bizarre occurrence, they retrieve the ring. Daedalus attempts to get the ring, motivated by his desire to experiment on its powers. He theorizes that the god who created it couldn't have worn it due to its size, leading the hero to entrust the ring to the oracle. Hero plans to use it to prove his identity to his father, the king of Athens. In Athens, Pallas and Xerxes conspire against King Aegeus while enjoying a bath and discussing their treasonous plans. 
Meanwhile, Medea struggles to revive her husband from the sleeping drafts she has been administering. Lycos devises a plot to poison their enemies during a festival to Poseidon and seeks poison from his mother, Medea. Xerxes suggests a grand feast to honor Apollo with Medea as the hostess. Medea reluctantly agrees but asserts her authority. During this, Pallas plans to make Lycos sit on the throne, but Lycos hesitates to take his father's place while he is still unwell. Medea warns Lycos about the plotting against him and urges him to step down from the military council due to fraudulent lexicon experiments, but he refuses. During the ceremony, Medea realizes her robe is soaked in oil, threatening to ignite during the fire ritual. Suddenly, Aegeus interrupts the ceremony, enraged at Medea for usurping his throne. He humiliates her and forces Lycos to kneel before him. Later, Medea mourns her downfall, and a servant girl reveals to Xerxes that Medea had been drugging the king with a different tonic. In response, Xerxes kills the servant girl. In the forest, a mysterious woman known only as the Lady of the Forest kills two brothers to get the attention of their mother, an old woman who was previously captured by the Cyclops. Failing to extract information about the whereabouts of the hero and the oracle from the old woman, the Lady of the Forest resorts to murdering her as well. In Minus's military camp, the oracle faces skepticism from Minus, who tests her loyalty by demanding her virginity as a gift. He also orders the beheading of the hero. However, Minus's daughter manipulates him into questioning the hero first, revealing her cunning nature. Deadless, once enslaved by Minus, is branded a traitor and subjected to cruel punishment, including having a box placed on his head containing a beehive. Meanwhile, Minus's daughter plans a disturbing fate for Hero, describing it in a sexually charged manner. Her desire to drink his blood leads to her being momentarily distracted, allowing Hero to take her hostage. Despite being recaptured, she does not wish for his immediate death, raising concerns about her intentions. In Athens, Lycos attempts to persuade the council to seek help from reluctant allies, but King Aegeus insists on dying gloriously in battle. Aegeus disregards tactics and plans a suicidal charge outside the fortifications, even strangling a general who opposes his plan. Meanwhile, Medea questions Cyrus about the coincidence of Hero meeting both the divine oracle of Gaia and Minos's top scientist before heading to Minos's camp. Lycos, concerned about his father's reckless plan, agrees to change Aegeus's mind if he helps capture the hero from Minos's camp. Lycos recruits an assassin from the troops, much to the shock of his companion Kimon, whom he doesn't fully inform about his plans. Pallas, worried about Lycos's actions and his potential alliance with Medea, meets with fellow generals to discuss the situation. They suspect Medea of negotiating with Minos and believe she is manipulating Lycos. Medea orchestrates a sacrificial ritual to Ares, presenting the king with a bull's heart, which he reluctantly refuses to eat after she interprets it as an omen of his demise. To delay the battle, Medea sends a priestess to seduce Aegeus all night to gather semen for a sacrificial offering. She also steals a lock of the king's beard to use in magic to locate Hero. At the Minosian camp, Minos prepares to assault the oracle while his daughter, Ariadne, plans to do the same with Hero. Both victims are coerced into playing along with their captor's schemes, but Ariadne's exaggerated enthusiasm and outlandish expectations fail to arouse Hero. Meanwhile, Hero attempts to reason with Ariadne, explaining the difference between a lover and a prisoner, but she remains frustrated by his lack of resistance. In a daring move, Hero manages to tie her up and make an escape attempt, only to be thwarted by guards. The next day, Minos becomes convinced of the Oracle's abilities, but Ariadne, still skeptical, orders Hero's execution instead of his release, causing a serious complication. Meanwhile, despite being blinded by torture, Deadless survives and is assigned an assistant named Thybus to help him design flying machines for Minos. Together, they devise a plan to free Hero from his cell using a contraption they created. However, their efforts are thwarted by a guard, who is later revealed to be working for Lycos. In the chaos that ensues, Hero manages to escape, leaving behind a trail of violence and uncertainty. Additionally, the mysterious forest lady makes a dramatic appearance, adding to the intrigue surrounding the unfolding events. The hero's arrival in Athens is far from graceful as he clumsily shoots a guard in the leg, setting off a chain of events that leads to the death of several more guards. Meanwhile, Medea visits Lycos to demand information about Hero's arrival and to warn him about Kimon's allegiance to Pallas. Back at Minos's camp, the oracle is left tied to Minos's bed. Ariadne attempts to seduce the oracle, but her efforts are met with discomfort rather than compliance. As Ariadne massages the oracle's legs, an ominous vision clouds the oracle's mind, hinting at dire consequences involving eagles, snakes, the king of Athens, and the fate of the world. In Minos's camp, Deadless continues his work on war machines while Minos emphasizes the importance of winning in a glorious manner. Meanwhile, in Athens, Medea and Pallas engage in further plotting, with King Aegeus distracted by his activities with a priestess. 
Pallas and Xerxes plan to surrender and negotiate with Minus with the ultimate goal of seizing power for themselves. They also attempt to manipulate Lycos into facilitating the surrender despite Lycos not actually intending to surrender. They hope to use the surrender negotiations to their advantage, possibly to frame Lycos for treason and further their own ambitions for power. Meanwhile, Hero finds himself in trouble yet again after being mistaken for a Minoan spy. Despite his efforts to intervene and protect the citizens of Athens, he ends up on the losing end once more. As Lycos struggles to gain the people's trust, he encounters Hero, who claims to be his brother, but they don't get along. Meanwhile, Medea tries to convince King Aegeus to accept Hero, but Aegeus is too suspicious. Pallas and Xerxes plot to kill Hero, but their plans are interrupted when Medea intervenes. In Minos's army camp, they plan to attack Athens, and the oracle suggests using Daedalus's skills to break through the city walls. However, she's worried about Hero possessing dangerous abilities and warns them. In a flashback, Hero's parents have a revealing post-sex conversation where Aegeus, Hero's father, tells his mother about the curse on their unborn child. He gives her a ring and urges her to flee to the wilderness to raise the child in secret. However, Aegeus is later attacked by Calciope, who wants the ring back. He manages to wound her but lets her escape so she can spread the word that he's alive. Aegeus explains to Hero that he lied about the lexicon, seeing it as both a source of power and a curse. Hero, skeptical of his father's motives, sees through his excuses and realizes he's being kept as a prisoner rather than a guest. Meanwhile, Medea takes possession of the ring and questions Aegeus further, warning him of the consequences if he doesn't cooperate. She learns about Hero's desire to rid himself of the lexicon, realizing that their situation is more complicated than she initially thought. After this, Medea persuades Aegeus to name Hero as his heir, despite the tension it causes in the court. Pallas is displeased to hear this, seeing Hero as Medea's puppet and fearing the loss of their manipulation over Lycos. Therefore, he plans a coup using Lycos' surrender message. Medea confronts Lycos about Hero's arrival, but he pushes back and demands his mother to reject Hero. Meanwhile, Aegeus tries to win Hero over by sharing his struggles with the lexicon, but Hero remains skeptical. Now, as Hero contemplates the idea of passing on the lexicon, he has a surreal dream involving Ariadne and the Oracle. Upon waking, Hero visits the woman he saved from the guards and they share a kiss, but Hero's inner turmoil causes him to pull away. He confides in her about his true identity and situation, and she offers him shelter out of gratitude. In Minos's camp, a message from Lycos arrives. Oracle manipulates the message to arrange a meeting with Lycos herself. Meanwhile, Daedalus is still working on a weapon, and Oracle plans to use the exchanged messages as a distraction. However, Medea catches the message meant for Lycos and exposes his folly in trusting Minos and others. She manipulates the situation to accuse Pallas of treason, leading to his arrest. Meanwhile, Hero is mistakenly kidnapped by King Minos, but Oracle intervenes to save him and reveals his true identity and connection to the lexicon. Aegeus, Hero's father, attempts to win Hero's cooperation by revealing his own past mistakes, but Hero agrees to work with Medea for the sake of obtaining the lexicon. Meanwhile, in the Temple of Gaia, a new oracle predicts an impending attack, but Calciope appears and kills the oracle and Cyrus, learning the location of the Oracle of Gaia in the process. Hero endures torture and visions under Medea's watch, including a warning about facing a future self and killing love, which confuses him. Medea believes he must defeat Aphrodite, the goddess of love, to control the lexicon. In Minos's camp, Daedalus is pressured to finish his siege engine or face a gruesome fate. Meanwhile, Oracle encounters cannibals attacking a boy, but Calciope intervenes, revealing her true nature as a ruthless antagonist. After this, Calciope seeks Oracle's help in finding Hero. Meanwhile, Medea leads Hero to a cave where he's meant to confront Aphrodite, but instead finds Oracle praying. However, Hero gets confused with him realizing Calciope's true identity and Oracle expressing her feelings for him. Outside the cave, Medea and Calciope confront each other, revealing a complex history as sisters with unresolved conflicts. Hero, unable to kill Oracle with his rope, fights Calciope but ultimately manages to stab her after making a deal to spare his and Medea's lives in exchange for the Magi Ring. However, the ring disappears along with Calciope's body, leaving Medea puzzled. Medea questions Oracle about Hero's feelings, confirming that they love each other despite Hero's curse. Medea manipulates the situation, insisting that Hero must kill Oracle to break the curse, much to Oracle's confusion and Hero's reluctance. In Athens, Lycos confronts Kimon about accusations of being Pallas's spy. They reconcile momentarily, but when Lycos discovers Pallas is to be executed for his crimes, he feels compelled to confess his own involvement to prevent his uncle's death. After this, Pallas is put on trial, but when Lycos confesses, he argues that his actions were for the city's greater good. Aegeus struggles with the idea of executing his own son, but before he can decide, Medea and Hero vanish. 
Meanwhile, Minos prepares to attack Athens, and Aegeus, without Medea's guidance, struggles to devise a strategy. Xerxes, feeling guilty about betraying Pallas, offers him a choice between poison and stabbing. However, Lycos intervenes, revealing Kimon's true identity as Aegeus's illegitimate son and Lycos's brother. Horrified by the revelation, Lycos banishes Kimon, feeling betrayed and angry. As the war begins, Minos's forces advance towards Athens, and Aegeus is overwhelmed by the chaos and uncertainty. As Daedalus's bull-headed war machine approaches the gates of Athens, Minos expresses doubts about its effectiveness. Nonetheless, the Athenians shoot arrows at it in a futile attempt to stop it. Inside the palace, Aegeus is in despair over Medea's absence, while Lycos tries to convince him to evacuate as Minoan soldiers surround them. Meanwhile, Hero and Oracle argue over their loyalties and Medea's influence. Hero insists on keeping Medea's help to rid himself of the lexicon, much to Oracle's dismay. However, Medea is furious that Hero lost the Ring of the Magi, leaving him vulnerable to Kronos's influence. Returning to Athens, they find the city overrun by Minos's forces. Medea suggests abandoning the city, but Hero seeks Daedalus's aid. Hero also realizes that if he dies, the lexicon dies with him, potentially angering the gods who entrusted Kronos with guarding it. In the palace, Minos claims the throne and commends Daedalus. Minos's daughter, Ariadne, interrogates the captured royal family, but when they claim ignorance about Medea and Hero's whereabouts, she kills Pallas. Ariadne then captures Hero, Oracle, and Medea, bringing them before Minos. Oracle skillfully manipulates Minos into sparing their lives, convincing him that she acted in his best interests. Despite Ariadne's suspicions, Minos seems inclined to trust Oracle's judgment, sparing them for the time being. Minos lays out demands for Medea, who responds with her own terms. Their exchange takes a brief romantic turn, but Medea remains steadfast. Meanwhile, in the caves, Aegeus and Lycos are visibly distressed and fearful. Ariadne confronts Oracle questioning her desires, but Oracle rejects her, leading to a tense exchange where Ariadne tries to manipulate Oracle's emotions. After this, Ariadne interrupts Medea and Hero's plans, insisting on a private moment with Hero. Despite objections, Ariadne gets her way and attempts to seduce Hero, who resists. Oracle witnesses their interaction, which hurts her badly. After this, Oracle arranges to speak with Hero, seeking to understand his feelings for Ariadne. Hero admits his affection for Oracle and plans his escape. Meanwhile, Medea and Daedalus believe they've found the door to Olympus, but Hero insists on going despite Medea's reservations. He tries to persuade Medea to help him escape during the ritual, irritating her. Meanwhile, Minos is angered by his men's behavior, and Ariadne kidnaps Oracle, accusing her of stealing Hero's love. Ariadne forces Oracle to promise not to pursue Hero before leaving her tied up with a scorpion. During the ritual, time freezes and Kronos appears. Hero taunts Kronos as he knows that he can't kill him without destroying the lexicon. After this, Hero escapes during the time freeze, leaving everyone puzzled. After waking up, Medea tells Minos that Hero was taken by the gods. Medea investigates Hero's disappearance, finding Kronos's claw marks, ancient symbols representing gods. She enlists Xerxes to translate the symbols, promising him a less painful death in return. However, she doesn't follow through with her promise. Medea consults Daedalus, who realizes his mistake in leading Hero to what he thought was the door to Olympus. Instead, they find petrified titans and a dangerous weapon at the center. Medea insists on rescuing Hero and ventures out into the night. During her journey, Medea encounters wild men engaged in a theological argument and narrowly escapes attempted rape before one of the men kills the other and flees, leaving her tied up with a corpse. Meanwhile, Hero arrives at his meeting point with Oracle only to find Ariadne waiting for him. Ariadne expresses her obsession with Hero and insists that he loves her. Despite Hero's rejection, Ariadne persists in her pursuit, claiming that Oracle loves her and is a lesbian, thus justifying her affection for Hero. As they set off together, Ariadne breaks down in tears, realizing that she cannot return home without facing punishment from her father. She professes her love for Hero and begs for his affection, but Hero rejects her, citing the curse that would afflict any child they might have together. Despite her pleas, Hero remains steadfast in his rejection of Ariadne's advances. They arrive at the cave, with an ice-cold golden apple outside. Inside they find Pandora's tomb, which Ariadne quickly realizes is a terrible thing to open. However, Hero doesn't listen to her. Back in Athens, Oracle is released by Minos's men who tell Minos that his daughter has been doing weird things with scorpions and has now disappeared. Minos is very upset by this and is half convinced that Oracle is responsible. He demands a vision and she tells Minos that Ariadne is going to the Temple of Hera on pilgrimage to ask Poseidon to forgive Minos and she's all alone. 
After hearing this, he begs her help in finding Hero and his daughter so they can get the lexicon and head off to Olympus. He tells her that wants her to be his queen and his equal. Oracle is not really happy with this but agrees, so long as he does something for her. She wants him to kill Aegeus since her vision shows he would kill the gods and end their world. But it's not simple because killing kings angers the gods, especially Poseidon who's a thorn in Minos's side. They need to go through a complex process to make killing the king okay, so Minos asks for Daedalus's help. He claims they need a volcanic stone crucible to make more wings, which Medea can use to save Hero on time. The oracle prays to Athena, troubled by the fact they're having Aegeus killed. Minos presses her, desperate to know what happened to his daughter. She finally reveals that Ariadne went after Hero but doesn't know where they are. He asks for a vision and she sees Hero and Ariadne together, kissing, which upsets her. Therefore, she delays giving Minos a vision, urging him to wait until after Aegeus is dead. In the prison caves, Lycos tries to connect with his dad, but Aegeus is awful as he is waiting for divine help. Aegeus gets more delirious, claiming he's the king and revealing himself to other prisoners who don't like him. During this, someone tries to kill Aegeus and Lycos has to defend him. However, Aegeus thinks it's divine help before insulting his son, who's injured. After this, guards arrive to take Aegeus to the king-killing ceremony. During this, Oracle has a vision, realizing at the last moment that Hero, not Aegeus, is the king who'll anger the gods. She rushes to save Aegeus. Meanwhile, Hero opens Pandora's tomb, finding the Ring of the Magi and strange black water that pulls them in. Medea, still tied down with a corpse on top of her, hallucinates the ghosts of her murdered children who debate whether to rescue her or watch her die. The vision of Lycos appears to take the children away, but one of the vision kids seems to untie her. She makes her way to Pandora's tomb, where she finds Ariadne's clothes. Inside the tomb, she discovers Hero curled up and manages to rescue him with a potion. Hero, desperate to save Ariadne, wants to leap back into the tomb, but Medea stops him, reminding him that he survived only because of the Ring of the Magi. The water in the tomb is revealed to be the River Styx, and Hero anguishes over Ariadne's fate. They escape as white smoke emerges from the tomb. Medea is ecstatic about Hero's sacrifice of love, viewing it as the first step toward his destiny. She reveals that his next sacrifice must be his heritage, which means returning to Athens to kill his father, Aegeus. Hero, now desiring to become a god, believes he may be able to bring Ariadne back from the dead. Meanwhile, in Athens, Oracle informs Minos about the dangers of the lexicon and warns him of Hero's destructive potential. She finally has a useful vision, revealing the location of Medea. Oracle, along with Minos, interrogates a drugged spy to learn more about Medea's escape. They discover Daedalus's involvement and discuss the threat posed by Pandora's tomb, which Medea's priests already know about. As they converse, white fog approaches the city, prompting them to assume it is an ominous sign. Medea and Hero arrive in a deserted Athens, where they find Aegeus barely alive and Lycos dead in the prison caves. Aegeus hints at the location of the second sacrifice, suggesting they need the sword of the first king of Athens. Believing the sword to be hidden beneath unmelting snow, they venture to the supposed location, but the fog closes in around them, separating them from Aegeus, who disappears. In the fog, Hero encounters Ariadne while Medea is confronted by the accusing visions of her murdered children, revealing her true motive for seeking the lexicon. Both Hero and Medea resist the temptation offered by their loved ones, realizing that the sword is buried under the throne. Hero retrieves the sword but is confronted by Aegeus, who attacks him. In the ensuing struggle, Hero stabs Aegeus with the heritage sword, fulfilling the second sacrifice and appearing in front of Medea, allowing for a tragic farewell. Killing Aegeus causes the fog to retreat, replaced by ice, signifying the completion of the second sacrifice. Meanwhile, Daedalus ventures out to investigate the fog and encounters the ghost of his son, Icarus, who leads him to the tomb of Pandora. At Minos's camp, chaos ensues as half of his men revolt and the others desert, while Oracle's cryptic warnings add to the tension. On top of this, Minos grows increasingly worried as ice and snow begin to fall. A flashback to Daedalus's past occurs where he recalls his struggles with his pregnant wife and his frustration with the gods. In the present, Daedalus confronts Apollo and experiences a surreal encounter, leading him to question the nature of the gods. Meanwhile, Hero and Medea find themselves trapped by ice and Hero sees it as an opportunity for another sacrifice, this time involving Medea. Oracle, now without threats from Minos's guards, confronts Minos about her feelings and the nature of love. Daedalus joins them, pushing Oracle to find Hero using her visions. Oracle's recollection of Hero's words leads Daedalus to a revelation about the nature of the gods. Oracle discloses Hero's location to Daedalus and Medea, who are reunited with Hero in Athens. Daedalus expresses his desire to obtain the Ring of the Magi, prompting a confrontation with Hero about the gods. 
Hero demands both science and faith, while Medea insists on choosing one. Hero discovers Oracle in bed with Minus, leading to a violent confrontation and a revelation about Oracle's virginity. In a fit of rage and jealousy, Hero tortures Minus until Oracle pleads for mercy. Hero's actions lead to Minus's death and the realization of his third sacrifice, his own soul. As Hero grapples with his actions, he learns the truth about Oracle's virginity, bringing a new understanding to their relationship. Medea taps into her powers as a witch and calls upon Circe, making a daring bargain for assistance in reaching Olympus. Despite the risks to her own life, she offers everything in exchange for Circe's guidance, hoping to save others. Though Circe warns that she cannot resurrect the dead, Medea remains steadfast, trusting Hero to complete their mission. Miraculously, Medea survives the ordeal with Circe residing within her. With time ticking away before Circe takes full control, the group faces the daunting task ahead. Despite Daedalus's skepticism toward magic, he acknowledges its role in leading them to Pandora's tomb. Meanwhile, Hero attempts to redeem himself in Oracle's eyes, but her resentment runs deep. Oracle, seeking answers, tests Hero's claims with Gaia's power, leading to a confrontation that ends with Hero pinning Oracle down, insisting on his friendship. As they ponder the purpose of the lexicon, Daedalus and Hero theorize that Zeus may have a role in their quest. Despite Tempest's guardianship, they press forward, determined to uncover the truth. Facing the wrath of the fates, the group seeks refuge in a warded hut, enduring trials that test their resolve. They find themselves in a surreal realm, encountering a cryptic Hermes who dismisses Oracle's sacrifices and warns of their insignificance. During this, Daedalus interjects with his mockery of the gods and displays the intimidating power of the Ring of the Magi, prompting Hermes to retreat. The fear instilled by the Ring leads Daedalus to reinforce his belief that the gods move too swiftly to be perceived by mortals. Oracle grapples with the consequences of her revelations while Hero attempts to reconcile their differences by blaming Oracle for his predicament. However, Oracle refuses to accept the blame and continues on their journey. As they press forward, Deadless speculates about the gods' invisibility and potential threats from otherworldly adversaries. In their quest for survival, they stumble upon a desert where Medea succumbs to dehydration. Oracle invokes Hermes in a desperate bid for water, interpreting his cryptic actions as assistance rather than harm. Their journey leads them to the Temple of Gaia, the gateway to Olympus. Despite Hero's futile attempts to prolong Circe's influence, Oracle asserts Medea's superiority over Circe through cunning and trickery. Uncertain of their next steps, they turn to Oracle once more, who reveals that they must share a meaningful kiss to access Gaia's blessing. After a reluctant exchange between Hero and Oracle, time appears to freeze as they breach the doors of Olympus. Their journey reaches a pivotal moment as Kronos, the personification of time, makes a foreboding appearance. In a perplexing turn of events, Hero finds himself strangling Deadless, accusing him of stealing the ring of immense power. Their struggle for control over the ring escalates until Hero seemingly strangles Deadless to death. However, the narrative takes a sudden flashback to the gates opening and Kronos, the gatekeeper, appearing before them. Kronos, known for his deceitful nature, guides them towards Tartarus, promising to fulfill their deepest desires. Oracle takes the lead, explaining that their love for each other has opened the door to this realm. Yet, Hero's unresolved feelings for Ariadne cast a shadow over their unity, leading to bitterness and discord among the group. Their journey takes a dramatic turn as they confront a mysterious mirror, prompting them to question their own existence and purpose. As they venture into a new world, Medea warns of the dangers that lie ahead. Separated by Oracle's mystical intervention, each member of the group encounters startling revelations that challenge their perceptions of truth and reality. Deadless is confronted with a futuristic vision of mankind's achievements, while Oracle grapples with the harsh reality of existence and the pursuit of meaning. Meanwhile, Medea confronts the truth of her past and the loss of her children, prompting introspection and acceptance. Hero's encounter with Ariadne and Goats leads to a perplexing moment of realization as Ariadne fails to recognize him and instead professes her love for Dionysus and her goats. After the group is reunited, Medea declares that it's time for judgment by the gods, hinting that they may be dead. Refusing to face judgment, Deadless devises a cunning plan to steal the Ring of Power. Meanwhile, Medea ascends a staircase to face her own judgment where she is confronted by the ghosts of her murdered children. Hero and Oracle find themselves judged together on a floating raft where Hero confesses to killing Deadless and urges Oracle to condemn him. However, Oracle sacrifices herself instead, choosing mankind over her own fate. But her decision proves to be a bluff as Gaia reveals that choosing humanity was the correct answer all along. As they confront Zeus in his prison, he reveals Oracle's true identity as Pandora and engages in a cryptic exchange with Hero about their names and destinies. 
The series concludes as Hero strikes a deal with Zeus to free him in exchange for granting humanity free will, leading to Zeus's dramatic emergence, proclaiming himself as the one true god.